azwe lonke azwe lonke azwe lonke amahahabe amacawe we pay tribute to the king of the Tosa people king sikau tonight who passed away uh, at the beginning of the weekend and of course our condolences to the entire Tosa nation across uh, the hinterland indeed uh, a sad moment an unexpected passing of a monarch of the Tosa people 50, only at 51 uh, still so much to give uh, to this nation indeed i think that uh, 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 the, he must be given the necessary respect um, and understand there is a little bit of a tug of war about whether or not he should get the highest possible uh, 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 official uh, funeral, what is called category one official funeral. Hopefully that will be done and no dilly dallying about it. There is a, a problem in South Africa. We class monarchs. We class monarchs. So, you know, when he's Zulu king, when he, when he, when he, when he, is, he just sneezes everybody coughs and all the others just don't matter and that's how unfortunately how it, it, has, it has become and i think we need to stop that and ensure that all of the monarchs of our people are treated the same may his soul uh, indeed rest in peace of course the big story uh, of course have been the, the democratic alliance uh, the, the election of john Steenhuisen coming at no as no surprise at all uh, to the observers who have uh, concluded that the DA is going back uh, to its roots. Uh, and of course, the chairperson of the DA, the, new, the newly elected federal chairperson, saying that, no, they are actually going back to the future. I'm not sure how you go back uh, to the future, but uh, it shows the policy confusion that often uh, engulfs the DA. But of course, uh, it's, it's, it's a newly elected leader, John Steenhuisen, very enthusiastic chair, very energetic fellow, uh, is going to talk to me about how uh, you know, he's going to lead the DA out of what is uh, really a crisis of identity. You know, you know, I, in the, over the last couple of years, I have spoken both on radio and television to various DA leaders. I probably talked to four or five national DA leaders more than once or twice. And each time I talk about broad economic empowerment, employment equity, affirmative action, I always find that they are always giving me different versions of what the DA position really is. I think it will be helpful as they go to a policy conference to just clarify once and for all, is the DA truly committed to a black economic empowerment? Black economic empowerment, as we have always said on this show, is not to be just summed up SBEE, it's actually a range of questions that need to be answered. Who needs to own businesses in South Africa? Who needs to run businesses here? Who needs to empower businesses? What sort of businesses uh, need to be empowered? What kind of investment and which communities need to benefit from investment of businesses? These are questions that when answered collectively, uh, sum up what black economic empowerment is. And it's not a complex theme. You know, they had a, a policy head who had to just had to leave because she found that it was frustrating to even just just understand what the DA position is. I've spoken to, to, to bright guys, but I mean, because somebody like a Bongani Balui, very bright. But when you get to the question of BAE, you, you can write his own chapter. Every leader seems to have their own version of BAE. And I just, want, I just sometimes want to be a fly in the wall of a meeting of the DA where they are talking about black economic empowerment. We saw what Mashaba had to say when leaving office. We saw what Musi himself had to say. The issue of race uh, is always a, a big issue. And I hope that John Steenhuisen will help me to understand how, how he's going to navigate uh, those uh, particular waters. Let's take a look at uh, what uh, John is, uh, has to say upon his election early this afternoon. We've got to turn the setback of the last election into the biggest comeback in South African politics. That means we have to be a party built on organic authenticity, which means we have to put down genuine roots into every community in South Africa so that we can win the trust of them and that our branches and our activists and our structures must form an umbilical cord that connects the DA with those communities. And then as a party and government, we have to demonstrate the 
under our political opponents that people cannot help but talk about it going forward. And that's why we are of all the major parties in the South African landscape, we are in effect the only party that's fighting for a truly non-racial South Africa to exist, where the reality of an equality of opportunity will mean you don't have to worry about having to engineer an equality of outcome at the end of it. And we also believe, and I want to be explicit and clear here, that the DA believes that the legacy of apartheid must be corrected through targeted redress. This is imperative. And this redress will form the foundational uh, processes of the DA going forward. Because to simply accept that apartheid wasn't a brutal and unjust system uh, is to deny the fact that it continues to haunt the lives of many of the people in South Africa today, two and a half decades after it came to an end. And those who still suffer and are still excluded must be the beneficiaries of redress. We can target redress policies directly where they need to be, um, at the poorest in our society, all of whom, uh, almost all of whom, happen to be black South Africans. The truth of the matter is simply this. 25 years of race-based policies have made poor South Africans poorer, have ended up locking more South Africans out of opportunity, and have made a very, very small group of people in South Africa exceptionally wealthy. There's been nothing broad-based or empowering about it. And so our party is going to be marked by empathy, by compassion, and a deep commitment to fighting the scourge of poverty in South Africa. All right. Of course, John Stien is in here in, at Newsroom Africa. He's going to be totally take, talk, talking me through uh, his vision and what he, he really means. I'm very curious to know what it means when you... To understand what is untargeted redress, which which redress is not targeted. I want him to under, to, to explain to me. Because Mahajule Jikana standing, the guy is a diehard man. Yeah, Mahajule is a diehard. He failed to be chair, federal chair a, a couple of years ago. This time he decided to stand again for leader. You know, when all the signs were clear, just daylight, that the, the DA has taken a direction that would only make John Stien Hazen to be the leader, but of course the democratic process. So he had to make sure that he goes there. Because I, I thought when Madikizela was withdrawing, that meant that in fact somehow he wanted to make sure that you know, he doesn't sort of divide the vote or whatever. But you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a forever optimist with these things. Let's take a look at what Bakashule had to say. Uh, what we set out to achieve was that uh, the DA needs to recognize that it needs to start talking about the uh, economic justice, social justice, and environmental justice. These are the, the these are the important aspects that we set out to achieve, and we are quite happy with what we ran the campaign, how we ran the campaign, and uh, it's uh, from here on we have to go to the branches. You know that, that's the thing. We go to the branches, and uh, we make sure that our structures are strong, and then we prepare for the policy conference so that the branches have an input. And then we go to the Federal Congress where we elect uh, the leader so that we, we, know we don't sit with an interim leader. You know, we, we need to elect a, a leader for the organization. All right. Uh, uh, Mahashule Ghana, the diehard indeed, and he says he'll be wearing the DA t-shirt tomorrow. You would remember a few months ago, uh, Mahashule wrote an extraordinary article in the city press and asked the question, where are the DA whites? Just puzzling, you know, it's... It is one thing for ex external people to, to question why when you have a big march of the DA you only see black people in the middle of the day, marching. Ah, Mahashule writes in the city press, but where are the DA whites? And I, I will not be surprised if he got a, 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 a tongue lash for that kind of a, a clear and direct racialization of the situation. He says, but if you look at the parliamentary caucus of the DA, you can't compare it with the marches that the DA were holding in the middle of the CBD. A successful march, I must tell you, massive mobilization, which may well mean that the DA was, in a sense, successful in mobilizing the black vote. Any party that wants to end up being government of this country has got to mobilize 90% of the population. That's an obvious political strategy. So uh, I asked uh, the DA leader in the Western Cape, uh, earlier on in the week, was there a discussion indeed about whether or not it would be useful for a party like the DA to in fact have a black leader in order to attract black votes? This is what he had to say. Let's take a look at what Madikizela had to say, therefore. Tell me 
Uh, mm. Was there ever a discussion, right? And at least I want a straight answer, right? Was there ever a discussion about the fact that in order for the DA to appeal to the majority of yeah. black people in this country, right, it would be a good idea for it to have a black leader? Yes, there was such a discussion. Do you think that discussion is still relevant today? Yes, it is. Is there black caucus in the DA? Well, um, l let, me, let me just explain that. You see, the problem um, with people uh, who are talking about the black caucus, there are people who socialize together, um, JJ. Mm. Um, and sometimes it does happen. Uh, we are in South Africa that people of the same race socialize together. And I think that is where this issue of the black caucus came from. Um, I, 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 I don't belong into a black caucus. I don't think there's one that exists. I think it's people who socialize together who happen to be black, and that's how this term of black caucus, yeah, that's where it came from. As they would say in English, go tell that to the birds. But of course, at the bottom of this hour, John Steenhazen, the uh, new parliamentary leader of the DSOL as the new interim leader of the Democratic Alliance, kindly agreed to come and talk to us. You've got to stay tuned for that conversation. Of course, you can also ring us throughout uh, the evening if you want to talk to him. Uh, you also can send us your, your tweets on uh, hashtag your view on 405. You can tweet us at JJ Tabani. Tweet us at Newsroom 405. As I said earlier on uh, in the, uh, the bulletin, we are paying tribute tonight to the king of the Macaws. And we say, may his soul rest in peace. Kulungi Lebah.